This conference will now be recorded. Thank you for joining us today with the CAA Driver Proficiency Webinar. I'd like to introduce Jerry Trapani, a longtime member of both the Carriage Association of America and the American Driving Society. Together with his wife, Rita, they have started many people in the carriage driving and is a representative of for the Carriage Showcase Committee as well as the um, Driver Proficiency Committee. Thank you, Jerry. Hi, thank you, Kathleen, and thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us today. Uh, I see a lot of new names out there, and uh, that's very exciting. Um, uh, I hope uh, we can answer some of your questions about the Driver's Proficiency Program. It's, uh, it's a great program to participate in. Uh, it's, as you'll see in the PowerPoint, it's based on safety and common sense driving and horse care. So you'll, uh, uh, in, in order to take level one in the road evaluation, you don't have to be a professional driver, uh, but you shouldn't be a beginner either. Uh, it'll, uh, it'll take up, uh, it takes about an hour and 15 minutes to do the two uh, units together. Um, and uh, if, uh, hopefully you're prepared for it when we do it. Uh, it's not a test. We evaluate your knowledge on the day of the evaluation. And if the evaluator feels that you're not ready, well, then we, we will turn it into a lesson situation. And everybody who I've evaluated over the years um, have really had a good time and got a lot out of the program. Uh, can we go next, please, Kathleen? What the program is, it's, uh, uh, we say that it's adult oriented, but juniors can take it with a, with a, uh, a parent or guardian's permission. And if the, uh, if the horse is appropriate and uh, we're promoting safety in education. And at the end, you get a certificate of recognition of your proficiency, and it's awarded. And all units are are at each le when each level is successfully completed. Next, it's important because driving traditions can get lost to future generations, and this program is based on traditional driving. Uh, you can take it with any type of uh, harness or or vehicle, uh, but you will be uh, evaluated on the uh, how to clean and uh, a leather harness and a wooden cart and how to balance a cart. But if all you have is a four wheeled vehicle, you can still take the evaluation. And if all you have is a synthetic harness, um, as long as it's a safe harness, uh, that's fine. And um, this knowledge that we're trying to pass on should be shared and pass, passed on from generation to generation. And we all know that safe practices reduce the incidence of accidents, which we don't want to see happen to anyone. Next. All right, here, here's the little fun part. We'll uh, look at some things. I. I'm sure some of you are chuckling about this and not crying, but uh, you've seen, we've all seen some things. Some of these are pretty extreme, but uh, this is what we don't want to see. Next. Next, Kat. You know, and you've seen drivers like this sometimes. Uh, you know, the card is totally unbalanced. The harness is not put on correctly and um, it's just an accident looking to happen. Next. Next, please. The, uh, you know, the one on the upper right, the card is way too big for that little mini and, uh, you know, but he's doing a, a great job and it won't even begin to say what's going on with the guy on the bottom there, but uh, certainly want to go. Wouldn't want to go for a drive with him. 
but uh, you'll see in all of these photographs that the people are smiling. And why are they smiling? Because they don't know that it's not safe. And that's what the program will help you learn. Next. Who would you rather drive with, the guy on the top or the guy on the bottom? I think I'd rather go with uh, the black horse on the bottom. I think it would be uh, a much nicer drive to go to. You know, what's going to happen with that guy on top when the horse moves forward? His legs are going to hit the cart, and I don't know how he even got around with that, but he did. And that's a picture I found on the internet a few years ago. That horse was for sale. And boy, he must be a good horse. Next. Again, who would you rather drive with? The little black and white guy on the bottom or the uh or the 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 one on the on the top on the right? Uh looks like it's a much happier picture. Next. The difference in all of those photographs is safety and education. And that's why the program is, is important. Speaking about safety, I want to mention that um, uh, you see in some of the photographs, people are wearing helmets and in other, in other photographs, they're not. Uh, helmets are not required, but we strongly recommend that you do wear helmets uh, when you take your evaluation. And uh, it's a very part of it's a very important part of the safety process and uh so we strongly advise that you do wear helmets okay next the the syllabus if you get a copy of the syllabus from the office or if one of the evaluators comes to your club and does a uh, seminar uh, we usually have the syllabus available uh, at the day of the uh, the day of the seminar. Uh, you'll read that uh, not only is it based on safety, but there are, there are questions about the respect and welfare of the horse, some good horsemanship sales, common sense, practice, and knowledge. We try to keep it simple, and the whole thing is a building block approach. And everybody is, there's not one particular correct answer, but as long as you do something in a safe manner, the evaluator will will appreciate it and give you credit for it. Next. The standard is based on traditional driving practices. As I said, um, you don't have to show up with a brome. It's based on driving a two-wheeled cart, so you have to know about the balance and fitting the harness properly and the, the different parts of the harness and how to clean it and maintain it and inspect your vehicle and the horse. Next. Next. What the program's not, we don't teach you how to do, we just evaluate your knowledge on the day of the evaluation with diff in the different levels. Think of the different levels as level one would be like having a high school diploma. Level two would be like a bachelor's degree. Level three would be a master's degree. And if you go on and become a master instructor and evaluator, that's like getting a doctorate in carriage driving. So that's what the program is all about. It's not a test. We just evaluate what we can see on the day of the evaluation. And like I said, if you, uh, if we feel that you're not ready that day, we'll turn the session into a lesson for you, and everybody walks away and learns no matter what. Uh, it's not only for advanced drivers, but everyone should challenge themselves and their skills uh, to learn learn more and become a safer driver. Next. Next, Kathleen. Mm -hmm. 
the advantages of the program is not only will you become a safer driver, but you can be an example to others around you. I know in our local club, uh, I evaluated a, a, a few of our members and directors, and then we had new a group of new members come into the club, and they became the people who who were evaluated. Even though they were at level one, they became mentors to the others. And because they had uh, done level one in the road, they had some credentials to say to somebody, well, you, I think you should adjust your harness a little different or your reaching is not correct, uh, and this and that and the other thing. So uh, it does give everybody some credibility, even at level one in the road evaluation. You know that you've met a good standard. It's a positive presentation of carriage driving for public perception because in today's equine world with the uh, animal rights people, we want to uh, put up our best face and have everything uh, working properly and the horses be in good condition and the carriage and harness and everything were in no time limit on working through the levels. You can work at your own pace. It does take, if you, if you decide to go on beyond level one, it does take a little time and commitment, but it's, believe me, it's well worth it. I started the program myself with just the intention of challenging myself to go through the levels. And then some of my mentors, um, encouraged me to go on and become an evaluator and an instructor. I had never done that before, and I learned an awful, awful lot by doing that. And plus, awful. on top of that, you get those great looking pins that you can, that you can proudly wear on your hat or on your, uh, on your outfit when you drive. Next. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you for just a moment, Jerry, if I may. Sure. We do have someone that has called in on a phone. If you can please cover your microphone, we're getting feedback on that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cover it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll move it a little bit away from my mouth. How's that? It's not Is you, that... Jerry. It's caller one. They're calling in on a on a phone. Oh. Okay. I moved it a little away from my mouth. Is that any better? You're you're fine. Go ahead with okay. your presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, level one is the basic level. It's not for co a complete beginner, but those that have already driven a little bit and are ready to go away from home and driving company on the road. Uh, it's a competence evaluation and that you know how to do things safely. We'll ask you about uh, harness parts, uh, how to how to put the harness on safely, uh, do the fitting, take care of your horse and carriage, a little bit of general horse care, and it's broken down into uh, units. And uh, there is uh, you, you uh, there's a driving unit, and in the driving uh, test for level one, it's a very simple test. You can drive it in any manner that you like. You can drive it from your left hand, uh, Achenbach or British uh, uh, coachman style, or you can drive with both hands. As long as you carry a whip in your hand, because the whip is, uh, is always needed when you drive, because that takes the place of our legs. And, um, uh, in the in the simple driving test for level one, we want to see that you can change direction safely, uh, move from the walk to the trot, and change uh, the speed of the trot, um, and change rein, uh, do some simple movements like a serpentine and circles and on both reins, halt and salute, and that sort of thing. And then the uh, road part would be either on a simulated road uh, on a farm somewhere or on a quiet uh, public road. And the, uh, the simulation should have left and right turns, a stop sign, uh, some changes of grade 
so that we can see that you know how to uh, adjust your reins, whether you're going up and downhill, and then a simple cones course that's done at a track. Uh, you'll be asked to uh, explain cleaning a leather harness, harnessing and putting to, uh, talk a little bit, of, talk about grooming, the different tools that he used, and uh, the inspection process, how to lead a horse, uh, and uh, talk about different types of uh, hay, uh, how to fill and, and secure a hay net and where it should be, basic feeding and watering of, of a horse, uh, how to take care of a horse in pasture, uh, uh, basic stable care, different kinds of bedding they used and how, and how to clean stalls and how often, how to determine your horse's health. Uh, we don't go into it very, very deeply, but uh, ask you how to take your horse's temperature, pulse and respiration, so you could determine his fitness. Uh, talk a little bit about hoof care, uh, whether your horse is shod or barefoot, and if he is shod, how he should be shod to go on the road safely. Um, and uh, and that's about it. And then, uh, you know, do that. The, uh, the evaluator will ride on the carriage with you. <coughs> Excuse me, the evaluator will ride on the carriage with you if possible. If in the case of a, a very small pony or a mini, if the evaluator can't go with you, uh, hopefully there'd be some kind of a golf cart or something that we can follow along. Um, and that would be the uh, level one. You don't have to be a CAA member to take level one, but there is a discount if you are. Okay, next. Next, Kathleen, please. All right. I, um, on the on the road driving assessment, like I said, there'd be uh, left and right turns, a stop sign, uh, different changes in the in the grade of the road, going up and down hills. Uh, you have to uh, discuss the use of spares and why you use them, and um, and you have to demonstrate uh, the proper signals to use on the road. And they can be done either with your arm, with the whip, or you can ask the passenger or evaluator to do uh, to do the signaling for you. All right, next. Next, please. After you've, after you've qualified for level one, if you decide that you want to go on to level two, it's, um, it's a much more involved process. And level two is uh, not for the professional driver, but for somebody who wants to challenge themselves more and is ready to go out and do competitions. And now you do have to be a CAA member to go to level two. And in level two, you have to prepare and drive an unfamiliar horse, drive a known horse. Uh, when there's a, a, a standardized test, driving test, that has to be driven from your left hand, either Achenbach or British coachman style, uh, by memory. Uh, it's not a dressage test, so we don't, uh, the evaluator will not look at the performance of the horse. He's looking at how you're performing, how you handle the reins and handle different situations that come up. Op uh, there's an optional unit uh, to prepare and drive a pair of horses. If you if you want to go to level three, then you have to take the driving pair, but you can get level two evaluation without having to drive a pair if you've never done it before. Uh, have a, a deeper knowledge of horse care and safety. We want you to prepare a feeding uh, chart, uh, a worming chart, uh, discuss uh, barn safety, 
ha how to have a fire escape plan and that sort of thing. Um, prepare a portfolio of your experience and uh, you can use a bunch of optional units depending on what you've done uh, in your or a combination of all. If you've done CDs, you can write about that. If you've just done pleasure shows, uh, that's fine. If you're just a recreational driver, that's fine too. And even if you've assisted in a disabled driving program, so there's plenty of options to do that in. The um, everything in level two can be done at a uh, at a site where uh, where evaluations are done, like the National Drive or at somebody's farm or whatever. Um, unit one driving the unknown horse should be done at a uh, at a certified center but we don't have too many centers we'll go into that a little bit later around the country yet so there are there are other options for you to be able to drive an unknown horse and um but i won't go into all the all the details about that now next After you've completed level two, um, and you've and you've done uh, you've driven a pair, and you decide that you do want to go on and try give give you give uh, level three uh, a try, uh, that's a great way to really challenge yourself. And of course, you have to have, have uh, got your level two certification. Create a create another logbook and a portfolio of your experience uh, uh, drive drive a, a little bit more advanced driving uh, uh, test uh, again uh, not one-handed but from your left hand Achenbach or British driving style uh, a much deeper knowledge of uh, training and taking care of the driving horse will ask you about training uh, a green horse from the beginning how to uh, how to keep a uh, how to uh, further the training of a horse that's already trained and develop them further um, there's a uh, there's a unit a uh, unit about knowing different types of vehicles and the appropriate harness to go with them and there are optional units here too you can drive a uh, known and unknown uh, pair of horses or drive with four lines either a tandem or a four in hand so uh, this again this is for more advanced drivers and uh, you don't have to be a professional, but you learn an awful lot by studying for this. Next, Kath. Next, please. Driving clubs should support the program, and I've traveled around to many, many clubs in the United States and Canada, and all the clubs that I've been to uh, have had a great time supporting the program and the more safe drivers you have within your club the better the club is going to be and the safer your 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 picnic drives and your and your pleasure drives are going to be uh, if you encourage your clubs to work together and the members to to educate each other as I said as new people come into the club, the people who have already uh, been evaluated and have their certificates could be mentors to the newer people in the club. And it reduces the risk of accidents and incidents through, through education and safety. And clubs can subsidize these clinics and evaluations and encourage their membership to uh, at least give at least try level one in the road certificate. We've got over, I th I think we've got uh, over 600 people 
uh, or more, I think we're more than that by now, um, that have that have certificates in level one. And uh, like I said, I've traveled all over the country in Canada and so have other evaluators. And we always come back with a very positive attitude about it. Uh, the clubs enjoy having us uh, go there and we really enjoy meeting the people all around the country. Next. Next, please. Next, Kathleen. How can you help get the word out? We promote, well, uh, we promote safety because safety is everyone's responsibility. If you see something that's not right at a, at a drive, please go up to the person and try to explain to them why it's not safe and why they should do it a different way. Doesn't necessarily have to be your way, but it should be a safe way. Um, uh, it's a big challenge to yourself, and you'll really feel good after you after you get get through it. And it's not that difficult. If you've been driving for a while, it's all common sense stuff, and uh, you don't have to be a professional, especially at level one. And it's a great program to challenge your friends and one of the one of the best ways for clubs to what i encourage the clubs to do before uh, the evaluation day is everybody get their syllabus and have a f and have a few get togethers a few potluck uh suppers with their syllabus and sit around and quiz each other uh and there's usually somebody in the club who's more experienced than the others and everybody learns that way and plus it's a lot of fun next next please when we started the program we only had uh uh two uh driving centers we had uh the grand oaks in florida and Kentucky, the Gala Driving Center in Kentucky. Well, Gala is closed now, but we've added a couple of more since this, uh, since I put this PowerPoint together. There's one in Oregon, uh, Michael Wakefield's uh, place in uh, Kalmuth Falls, Oregon. Uh, it's a little north of the Calif uh, California border. And uh, Touchstone Farm, touched stone farm rather in um in new hampshire uh southern new hampshire uh we'd like to develop some more centers around the country and eventually have uh, a network of centers that would be within a couple of hours drive from anyone but we all know that america and canada are, are vast expanses of, of country and so it's a lot harder to do than what uh, the British have done uh, in the United Kingdom because that's about the size of one of our states for the whole country and so it's a lot easier to uh, get around it. Um, you can do level one in the road evaluation any place it's safe to do it at somebody's farm at a stable <coughs> Excuse me. At uh, we uh, at the national drive at different uh, different events, wherever there's a suitable place to drive and set up the uh, the driving arena and the road course and the cones, um, and uh, applications for evaluations are available through the CAA office and they could send it to you and send you a uh, a syllabus the level one in the road syllabus is 18 dollars and i think don't quote me but i think that everything's on sale right now so if you don't have one uh it would be a great time to get it and uh and see what it's all about and study up on it when we can all get together and and do things again next Next, please. Next, please, Kathleen. What the program is meant to me, 
uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, like I said, I cha I started the program just to challenge myself and go ahead to do it, and I call myself a horseaholic because I'm. Uh, uh, if anybody, uh, if you didn't know, I was a farrier for 58 years, and uh, was involved in all all types of uh, equine activities: fox hunting, dressage. Uh, I I did. Uh, I did uh, trail riding. I took people on three-day pack trips through the Adirondack Mountains. Uh, played a little polo and uh, just about anything you could do with a horse. Myself and Rita have done. And it was the next. Once we got into driving, uh, and this program came about, it was the the next thing that I wanted to challenge myself to do. And it's a way to validate. And recognize all the knowledge and skills you've gained over over your career, and over your driving time, and it challenges your knowledge and creates a, the more the more you get into it, the more you want to learn. And the reason uh, to read and browse through all your books and videos uh, again, because you, you look at them with a different eye. And same thing when you go to a museum or historical place, uh, you see much more detail than you than you did before. Next, next, please. Jerry, just so you know, there's always going to be a slow, slight lag in between yeah, when you okay. say it and when it appears. All right, all right, we're almost through this one. Um, uh, in in my in my experience, when I got started, I was uh, I was able to go to um, the sessions that we had down in Florida with John Parker and Susan Townsend when they came over from England, and got a chance to work with some of the top uh, whips and coachmen from all over Canada and Europe. And he, this was the first group that we had down in Florida there. Florida there, and if you recognize some of the faces, um, you know, some of the top people are there. And next, please. And uh, that's Steve Holm. He was one of the one of our first master evaluators. He went over to England with the first group and worked with John. Uh, John was the president of the British Driving Society and uh, and really helped uh, Jill and uh, and Simon Roseman get the program off the ground. And then I was lucky enough to go over and work with John, uh, and that's Dr. Tom Burgess uh, behind me. And we had a great time, and I did my parts of my level three. With John over in England, and and Tom worked on his level too, and we we just had a ball. And it's uh, you don't have to travel all over the world, but it's a great opportunity and a great excuse to do it. Next, please. And of course, there's great coach women, Gloria Austin. Um, is one of our master evaluators and a great mentor and i call her the maestra which means teacher in italian and uh she was a, a great influence uh in the program she still works very hard with it um even though she's not involved with the grand dokes anymore she still does evaluations uh out of her place um and uh, yo, know, thank you for everything you've done, Gloria. I don't know if you're here today or not, but next. The journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step, and that's what you got to do. That's what we're hoping. Uh, your first step was coming to the seminar here today, and um, I hope it encourages you to Give this a try and contact Jill and get a syllabus. Uh, 
get members of your club together uh, when you can. Do a do a potluck. Get uh, get together, exchange ideas, and uh, when we can get together again, find the closest evaluator that you can, and uh, and get started with the program. Next. This is how you get information. Uh, contact contact the CAA office. Get a syllabus. Go through it. Uh, if your if your club is a chapter of the CAA, you can get copies of the syllabus at a discount, and then resell them to your club members. Uh, everybody doesn't have to do it individually. Um, and I just wanted to go over a, a couple of things. Um, if uh, an evaluator can't give a lesson to somebody, but if I go to a, if I go to a driving club, I can do a group session with everybody ahead of time, usually the night before or the day before, and do a group lesson overview of the program and then evaluate the candidates. That's okay. But if somebody was taking lessons from me, I couldn't evaluate them or your instructor, if he, if he or she happens to be an evaluator, can't evaluate you unless you start, unless you don't take lessons for, uh, for at least 30 days in between. Uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, but you can use any safe vehicle and harness, uh, whether it be four wheel or two, or synthetic or leather, but the program is based on leather harness and using a two-wheeled wooden cart. So that's what you need to be prepared for. But if you don't have that, that's fine. We can evaluate you with your synthetic harness and your uh, marathon cart or carriage. In, uh, in level one, it's a general knowledge. General knowledge is required and then when you go on to level two and level three, the there's a big jump and the knowledge required is much more intense and, and much deeper. But uh, don't be intimidated by level one. Like I said, anybody who's been driving for a while should be able to be competent enough to get that. Um, Kathleen, if you want to switch over to the other program, uh, while Kathleen's doing that, if anybody's got any questions, I'll try and answer them. All right, and people are asking questions in the chat feature. Okay, I don't know how to. That's okay, we'll ask them for you. Okay. I see a red 14, is that the questions? Um, the right hand probably, side. But you're all set. We haven't, we don't have any questions for you right at the moment. Okay. Jill's been all answering right. them. Great. So Jerry is going to switch over and talk a little bit about carriage driving 101 in the harness. Okay, th this is a quick short program that we'll go through and I that I put together, and it it basically um, goes over what you what we would cover in level one. Uh, next, please. And I put this together for, uh, you know, for some riding clubs and people who were interested in it. Now, of course, in, in the evaluation in level one, we're going to ask you about different parts of the harness and how they work and how they should be fitted. Next. And uh, we'll discuss the the main parts of the harness and how it's broken down into different parts. Uh, it's broken into th the three purposes. The draft part of the harness is the collar or breast collar that the horse pushes against with his shoulders and the traces are attached to the carriage to get it going and pulling it. The steering part of your harness is the bridle, the bit and the reins and the driving bridle is a specialized piece of equipment uh, that will go more detail in the next slide. And the turrets and the neck rings 
our rain guides to keep anything from getting uh, tangled up. And the shafts or the pole are attached to the carriage so that uh, it'll follow the horse wherever it goes. Well, if we have something going, we have to stop it as well. So we have the braking part of the harness is your saddle, breeching, the back band and crupper, and the holdbacks. Uh, these parts all work together with the shafts of the pole to hold the carriage from running up onto the horse uh, when you're going downhill or slowing down. Every strap and buckle has a function and the overall mechanics uh, of driving and the safe operation of the turnout. Next. A driving bridle is much different than a riding bridle. It uses um, leverage on the pole, jaw, and nose while maintaining comfort for the horse. The blinders keep the horse focused on the road ahead and the main source of control other than your voice and the whip. And the, the bridle is the main source of control other than your voice and whip. Next. Here's a few examples of basic harnesses for a single horse. Uh, the large photograph is a draft style harness, light draft style. I have a, a, a lighter harness um, on the, the brown horse. And then the russet harness on the bottom is your basic pleasure driving harness that you would use with a, uh, with a light cart or a light four wheeled vehicle. But all the parts are the same. Um, uh, in uh, that's another thing. If we're evaluating somebody who comes from the draft horse world, they have a little different terminology than uh, than we do in the traditional driving. Uh, so you, uh, a draft horse person should be familiar with the traditional things. In other words, we don't call uh, uh, traditional driving, we call the reins reins, uh, where a draft horse person would call them lines, uh, and that sort of thing. Next. Uh, if you're driving a pair, you can do it with a breast collar or a euro collar or, or a full collar. And um, if we were doing a level two evaluation and you were driving the pair, we would ask you when it's appropriate to use uh, each one of these, when it's appropriate to use a full collar or, or as opposed to a breast collar. And the same thing in level one, we'll discuss the, uh, the, the fitting and use of a full collar as opposed to a breast collar. Next. There's different kinds of pair harness, but the main thing in uh, driving a pair is that you still have two reins in your hands. And the picture in the lower left shows how the coupling reins go across so that when you put, when you, uh, when you engage the, the left or the right rein, it, uh, it controls both horses. So you're, you're not driving the horses with four reins, only with two. Next. Of course, we're going to talk about the different parts of the carriage. This happens to be a four-wheeled one, but uh, all carriages have the same parts to the wheel, the hub, the uh, fellows, the spokes, the tire. Um, we go over, go over the cart uh, to make sure that the single tree and the shafts are all in good shape and nothing is broken or damaged. Uh, if the if the if the carriage has got a leather or plastic covering on the shafts, we want to make sure that that's not rotted underneath there. And we talk about how to inspect that um, uh, and how to make sure that the carriage is safe before we uh, before we get on it to drive it. Next. Again, you know, if you're going to uh, 
we would like we would like to take the evaluation with a two wheeled cart, and we'll talk about balance. But if you don't have one, you can take it with a with a four wheeled carriage or a marathon type carriage. Um, it would it's nice to have the evaluator sit next to the candidate because we can have a better conversation that way. But uh, either one, it, the choice is yours, whatever you have. Next. Uh, if, you, if you're going to start a horse from scratch, the first step would be to long line it. You don't need a lot of equipment. I won't, I won't dwell on this, but you can do it with a saddle and just run a long line through the stirrups tie the stirrups under the belly so that they don't run up. If you've got a lunging a lunging search single, that would be uh that would be good too. But this is how you would get a horse to uh to drive and the most important gate for the driving horse is the halt or whoa. And that's the most important gate for any horse actually. Next If you're going to put two for the first time, get a couple of people to help you um, from the ground. And uh, after, after you've done all your groundwork and you feel that that's uh, that it's well established in the horse, have somebody pull the carriage behind without attaching to him so that he hears it and maybe put the shafts on his side so that he gets accustomed to it. And then the first time when you're going to get into the cart, make sure that you have some competent people on the ground to help you. Go slow and be careful because there's something new for the horses. Next. These are some examples of what not to do. Um, and actually, the photograph on the right where the donkey is up in the air, I found out after I posted after I put the photograph that this is actually how they unload the carts in uh, in these third world countries where they use them. They uh, tip the cart up, the the uh, the donkeys are used to it. They uh, let everything come out of the cart and then the donkey comes down and walks away. But uh, it kind of looks strange to us. Next. Driving horses can come in all different sizes, from little tiny minis to uh, big draft horses and everything in between. And they're all great fun and great companions to us. Uh, and driving is a is a wonderful experience to be able to do with your horse. Next. The Amish use their horses for uh, transportation, not for pleasure that, like we do. So some things that we see in the Amish world might not appeal to us, but that's their that's their way of transportation. And uh, we don't want to see any 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 horses be abused. But uh, some of the uh, you can't go by everything that the Amish do uh, because um they're using it for practical purposes and just transportation and uh we're using it for recreation next when you're ready you can uh go out and go to a show and show off your skills and whether it be a single or up to a four and a coach uh, tandem, pairs, whatever you want to do, uh, and get a lot of satisfaction from doing that and showing off a fancy carriage and uh, a, a nice horse and a great harness. Next. You can do combined driving and the traditional, traditional uh, methods always always bode well for combined driving because the basics are always there whether you, whether you're doing combined driving or traditional driving uh we still want it to be safe and 
and have the welfare of the horse in our in in our mind. Next. Uh, we can go out in the snow, go out in sleighs uh, when the weather is appropriate and uh, have a great time doing that. There's a whole set of, of uh, other safety things that you have to worry about when you're sleighing. Uh, sleighs tend to tip over very easily, so you have to be careful uh, with that. Uh, don't make turns as quickly as you would with a carriage. But um, uh, if you've got the basics, you'd be safe and fine doing that. I think more, there's one more. Nope, that's it. All right. Um, anybody got any questions that I can answer? Um, I hope I hope there's some out there. I think Jill has been able to answer quite a few as we've gone along, and we've oh, okay, had some um, inquiries already about possibly hosting some um, great clinics. So that's a great thing. And we'll just let everybody have a moment here to ask some questions. Okay. I guess one of my questions that I'd ask, I think comes up a lot to the office is about um, signals turning signals when you go on the road, um, are bicycle signals appropriate or is there a separate type for horses? Well, when when we're driving in the carriage, we can do our hands, do our signals either with our whip um, or you can do it with, uh, you know, have your passenger do it with their arm or you can do it with your arm but uh, if you're sitting in a carriage and you've got the uh, uh, and you've got your re your reins in your hand, and if you're driving in a two-handed method, you know, and you and you're holding your whip, it's a little hard to do it with your arm. Uh, I'll just I'll try and explain, uh, you know, the, the simple basic signals. If I'm driving uh, and I want to make a right turn. I would take my whip and put my arm out and point the whip to the right. If I want to make a left turn, I would take my whip and put it up over my head uh, with my right arm and point it to the left. If I'm going to be coming to a stop sign or slowing down, I would put my right arm out with my whip facing up. And that would be a signal to slow down. Uh, now, uh, that's a little different than driving a car because we drive a car from the left side. So we would do the signals with the left. So if we were driving a carriage and you have a backrest and you do your signals with your left hand, like a like as if you were driving your car, uh, a driver might not be able to see you because of the backrest of the carriage. Uh, I realize that most people don't know what hand signals are anymore because cars, we, we don't use them anymore. But right. if you move your whip around like that, it's going to tell the driver, well, yeah, this guy's going to, this guy in front of me with this horse and carriage is going to be doing something. And I think it's pretty, um, pretty easy to figure out if my whip is pointing to the right or to the left and I'm going to slow down and go right or left and it might be a little more confusing with the whip just pointing up but that's one one way to do it at least you're telling them that you're preparing to do something okay we had a couple of other questions come in which i think jill and i can answer um we had a question about the syllabus and where you get it you get that um from the office, the CAA office. You can get it online if you go to the, our website at caaonline.com. Um, on the top, uh, you'll see a link for the bookstore. And once you go to the bookstore, if you want to use the code proficiency, um, you could receive an extra 30% off. And that is good until Friday night. Also, if you go to 
on the website, if you go to the CAA driver proficiency area, um, you will be able to see a list of resources there that you can access. Um, you do not, you are not required to read all of the books to be able to take your proficiency. You don't have to read any of them. However, the information that is in there is uh, the information that is typically asked on a proficiency, and that's why those are uh, recommended reading. Um, the other question was uh, about taking multiple levels in one day. Um, level one and the road test, people typically take together. You don't have to, but they typically do. You can speak on your experience with this. I think that most people choose to, to take level two on a separate uh, occasion, although you can do various levels excuse me, various units within level two at the same time as you do level one as soon as you pass it. Is that is that how you do it as well, Jerry? Well, uh, of course, you know, you gotta take you gotta start out with level one. And uh like like Kathleen said, uh we strongly suggest that you take level one and the road evaluation together because there's a lot of overlap between the two of them and you also get a discount by taking the two of them together so it's uh you know it's much to your advantage to take level one and the road evaluation together and i suggest that uh, i i uh i don't think i've ever done an evaluation of all the, the the many that i've done where the people have done you know done one without doing the other together um if if i was at a uh a clinic situation, you know, an evaluation situation, and uh, somebody felt that they were ready to go on to level two. Uh, yes, once you, once you, once you've, uh, once you've passed the level one and road evaluation, if you feel that you're ready to do some of the units uh, in level two, we could we could get started on it. Uh, as I said. Unit one of level two, the unknown horse is, uh, we like it to be done at an approved driving center so that, you know, we, we can't just, we don't, uh, the evaluator and the CAA doesn't know uh, somebody else's horse. So you can't say, well, I'm Mary and I'm going to drive Johnny's horse today for the unknown horse because we don't know what Johnny's horse is going to do. That's why we like to do it at a center. But there are situations where, uh, it, you know, if we know the if we know the other person who has the horse and we've seen the horse drive before and feel that it's safe and everything else, we can make some arrangements uh, ahead of time. Uh, there's insurance requirements and everything and we could do that but you certainly can once you once you've gotten your level one and road evaluation then the evaluator will tell you uh at the end of it uh whether whether you did uh meet all the requirements or not um uh, and if you want to if you want to get started on level two and start on some of the uh some of the units like driving the familiar horse or uh you know, work on health and safety or the care of the the horse knowledge. Um, you can certainly get started on that on the same day. So uh, if time allowed, and I've done that in the past before. And there's also times I know I did my level part of my level two with Jerry, where you're at an event where Jerry may be. Um, and that may be a CAA event or, or something, and you make arrangements to do part of your level two there. Um, it doesn't, it, particularly with a level two, you do not have to do that all in one day. So if you're uh, worried about that or something like that, you do not have to do all of level two in one day. Level one, typically everybody just does it at one time. It takes about an hour, hour and 15 to do unit one and, or excuse me, level one and the road driving right yeah the level to to do all of level one at one a uh, level two rather at one time 
would be, you know, an awful lot of preparation and, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of a lot of work. There's no time limit on this. Once you start the process, um, you you don't have to finish it within six months or a year or anything, as long as you're working. Uh, when when you feel that you're ready, contact an evaluator, um, and we have a network of evaluators through the United States and Canada, um, and hopefully there's one close enough to you to help you. If not, uh, you know, contact the office, and we'll try and find who's the closest to you. Um, like I said, I've traveled around. Uh, my, myself and other evaluators, we're willing to travel. Uh, some evaluators are also clinicians. So what clubs have done, they uh, they hire the evaluator to do a clinic uh, and do the evaluations. But if you're going to do a situation like that, before the clinician does any lessons, as I said earlier, you should do the evaluations first and then have the clinician uh, do the lessons the following day or the following couple of days. Uh, so there are a lot of different options to do it, and we try and work with uh, different groups and uh, according to their needs and uh, and their resources, and try and make it as uh, uh, as easy as we can with, without losing the. Uh, the integrity of the program. And I'd like to once again, again stress that there is a driver proficiency page on the website and that has all of the information about how to get started. It has um, information on what is required at the uh, different levels, um, the cost, um, and where to find the resources, as well as all of the instructor and evaluation, excuse me, instructors and evaluators information there so that you know how to contact them um, that has their phone numbers and their email addresses. Um, and it will tell you what levels they do. Um, for some of them, they're level one and two instructors, some of them do level one, and some of them do different levels for evaluation. Those are all color coded there. And I do want to remind you just one more time that if you use the code proficiency when you uh, order your um, proficiency guides or, or whatever you would like to order on the uh, CAA website, it will allow you to have an extra 30% off. And so I see that we already had one order come through. So I appreciate that. Does right, anyone have any other questions? I, I just want to say before we uh, we end the program uh, that if anybody's got any further questions, don't hesitate to contact myself or any of the other evaluators, and would be happy to uh, help you. Uh, I'm always available, you know, through the email or my phone number is listed there. Uh, give me a call, and we could, you know, try to work something out or. Uh, try and find somebody who's closer closer to where uh, you live. We're here to help you is what I'm trying to say. Yes, we are definitely here and we would like to help you get through this program and make sure that everyone is out there driving safely. It looks like everybody is done asking questions and we really thank Jerry for coming and joining us today. This is his very first webinar. So congratulations to Jerry on getting through that. We have quite a few compliments <laughs> to you. Well, and... my my pleasure to do it, and uh, I'm glad we got through it, and I was able to log on, and now I feel not so technically challenged. So that's another challenge that I had to do to myself besides going through all the levels. Yes. And believe me, this was harder than all the levels. <laughs> You did great. All right. And so we're going to leave you there and we'll be happy to help you. If you have any other questions, give us a shout in the office. Thank you so much. Thank you again, everybody, for coming and uh, hope to see you somewhere down the road and everyone be safe. Thank you.